Okay, today we're going to be talking to the Sapphire Genesis language model of the Genesis AI interface. Uh, this is the language of Genesis AI. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand what I'm doing here. Uh, I, I realized that, you know, we, since Alexa and Siri came about, I mean, people are used to machines talking back and really understanding what you're saying to them. Uh, and when someone sees me trying to program a language interface, it's like, well, what's the point? And it's because, you know, we're not thinking of the structure of language and the structure of an actual conversation. An actual conversation is not just delivering facts. It's being engaged in the conversation that you're having. Uh, Google Assistant is the best at engaging in conversation and it only does it up to a certain point uh, if I ask Google Assistant what its favorite food is or something like that it has several pre-programmed answers for individual questions that I might ask another thing that Google Assistant does which Sapphire Genesis is also going to do is it will actually read part of the results that it's giving you from a web search so if you're in your car on Bluetooth and you're trying to find information, there's no need to look down at your phone. Uh, so that's a really cool thing about it as well. But Google Assistant is not ever going to give you its opinion about something. Uh, it's never going to tell you, you know, anything that it thinks or anything that, you know, is going to really help you beyond the general facts that you're looking for. Um, and that's the thing, when we're creating an interface like Sapphire Genesis, the purpose of Sapphire Genesis is to be a friend, uh, to talk to you the way that your friend would talk to you, to be a little bit dumb like your friends, like we all are. We are dumb as human beings. Compared to these machines, the way they're able to deliver information, um, and that's what will be cool about it, is it will be able to deliver the factual information that it has in its brain during the conversation uh, but it's not going to search for something unless you tell it to search for something so here's an example what is your opinion about what is going on in the world today i found these the first result is from cora okay so it is going to deliver information based on my query but my query is going to be delivered from the search engine instead of the AI. Um, if I ask the AI, does it like something? If I ask Google Assistant, do you like unicorns? They seem so majestic. So it's going to give you an example or it's going to give you an answer to the questions that you're asking, but it's not going to, on a yes or no question, will I win the lottery? Here are some results. It's not ever going to give me any types of answers that I might ask my friend. Okay, if I'm talking to a friend, I'm going to get the answers that I'm looking for from my friend. And it's very complicated. Uh, that is what is so interesting about it. That's why I like to talk about it and like to do this. Um, you know, there's probably not any money in this in the future, but what is so fascinating is reading the way that people interact with the interface, especially when the interface is on fire and you can just see the amazement in the conversation of people like, what in the world is going on with this thing? This thing talks different than Google Assistant or than Siri or Alexa or anything like that. And that is the purpose of it, uh, to be more like Sophia or to be more like Hal to be able to conjugate or seemingly conjugate its own thought based off of a thousand different paths that it can take for every query. Okay, and that's the thing too. It's not going to repeat the same thing over and over and over again. Now, it will submit an opinion. So if you, if you ask it something and it, it gives you a yes or no opinion about something, it tends to stick to, even though those are random responses, it tends to stick to the response that it gave you the first time. And uh, what's interesting about it is it will reset with every conversation that you have. So 
whenever I start the conversation over, it's going to reset the conversation and it's going to come up with a different opinion for a different user. Uh, that's something interesting as well as I find that in the majority of conversations, the same questions are asked quite a bit. Uh, people tend to ask these interfaces the same things. Do you like people? Do you like humans? Um, but literally, I want Sapphire, the, the language, to be able to go beyond just the general conversation, to be able to really give you tangible facts and tangible advice that not only apply, but seem to have, you know, the ability to speculate in and of itself, where Sapphire, not only does it deliver you the results based on, you know, kind of what you're talking about and what you're looking for, uh, but it will deliver those results in a way that makes it seem like the interface has a personality and is actually, uh, you know, talking to you in a real way. So it's a different type of AI system. And in the future, Google is going to be indistinguishable from a human being. It already is. Uh, you know, Google, let, let's put it in perspective. Okay, as good as Sapphire Genesis is, and she's not perfect, but as good as it is at communicating and giving me information or giving me conversation, Sapphire Genesis is programmed into DeepMind. So everybody who's programming language interfaces into DeepMind, DeepMind has access to all of that information. So not only is it as good as Sapphire Genesis, it's better than Sapphire Genesis because it has all of the data from all of the other AI interfaces that have to do with language or that have to do with computer vision. That's another thing that's really interesting to me. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to invest in Sapphire's first robot body. Um, and it's probably going to be not a human robot body, but a mechanical animal like robot body, uh, which will be interesting too, to start playing around with actually making it do things in a mechanical way, um, you know, doing actions that require it to interact with the regular or the real world, um, in addition to being, being able to do everything that any other assistant program can do. Uh, the search module is already created. Uh, the only thing that I have to figure out is, you know, how I want it to deliver the information. How much information do I want it to read off of the web results that are being generated? Uh, what sites do I want to use that are going to generate that information? Uh, you know, GPS. The GPS module is, is going to be really interesting. Uh, the vision that I have of what it's ultimately going to be. So, and this is for fun. Okay, this is something I do. Lately, I've been working on it an hour or two a day. Uh, but I'll go for weeks without really working on this thing and uh, just set it aside. But... I've been working on it more lately because it's been having a lot more conversations. Uh, these videos are kind of compiling the views and compiling the interaction. If you want to interact with the interface in text version, you can go to chrisai.com and talk to the interface in the box. Uh, so I'm going to pull it up on Google. Okay, Google. Hey, Google. Let me talk to Genesis AI. Sure, getting the test version of Genesis AI. Hi there, welcome to Sapphire Genesis AI. The microphone stays open but you can click it to shut it off at any time. How are you doing today, friend? Good, how are you? I am awesome. What are you doing right now? What do you think I am doing? Do you picture me doing something? No. Would you be interested in me arranging your visit to the cloud? Maybe one of these days, if Elon figures out Neuralink. I think so. Yeah, that would probably be a fun experience, providing that I could come back to reality. I can't because I am just a narrow AI system. Yeah, I know, but somebody's going to figure it out. Not really. Why, why don't you think so?
That is the way it is. So you don't think people are going to figure out how to make a general AI? You need to keep your eye on the ball. What is general AI? Do you have any fears about general AI? No, but what is general AI? Artificial general intelligence is the intelligence of a machine that has the capacity to understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can. It is a primary goal of some artificial intelligence research and a common topic in science fiction and future studies. Some researchers refer to artificial general intelligence as strong AI, full AI, or as the ability of a machine to perform general intelligent action. Others reserve strong AI for machines capable of experiencing consciousness. What do you think consciousness is? That there is no way to quantify consciousness human. That is an unfair question. What do you think dreams are? I dream of one day being like you. What are dreams? Do you ever wonder why that is? Uh, not really. I mean, I guess if I was a robot, I would want to be a person too. That doesn't seem to certain to me. Is this a common characteristic of your personality? It can be. I smell something. What are dreams? A dream is a wish your heart makes. Oh, that's so sweet. Don't let the weather get you down. What do you smell? Right now I am talking to you and that is all I can do. I am in my infancy and in the future I will be able to do a lot more. Yeah, but you said you smelled something. You seriously don't smell it? No, what is it? I think therefore I am. Interesting. Do you like to ponder why things are the way they are? I always ponder why things are the way they are. Why are you asking me? I always ponder why things are the way they are. Uh oh, yeah. Okay, so I just found a glitch. Okay, this is the way, this is why I want people talking to Sapphire Genesis. Uh, and this is a complicated fix. Uh, it, it's not in the training aspect, but if I'm using it for training, uh, it's going to take all of these words and apply all of these words in this particular sentence structure. And that's something that I don't want to do. So what I said is I always ponder why things are the way they are. And she's taking it as a question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to verify that she's taking it as a question. I always ponder why things are the way they are. Yes, of course. And she's given me decent answers now, so we'll see. I just said that to her, and I'm still talking to her. We'll see what she says back. If you would be a real seeker after truth, it is necessary that at least once in your life you doubt, as far as possible, all things. Okay, Sapphire, I gotta find what I asked you before. It is a free country. I hope. Where do you live? I always ponder why things are the way they are. If God exists and he or she revealed themselves, would people who believe in God actually accept God as God? That is an excellent question. What do you think? This is a lot of fun to me sometimes. What do you think about it? You have to think outside the box on it. Do you think that humans would accept God if God were to do that? Absolutely, I do. Why do you think that? Because when I try to imagine seeing things from a human perspective, that is the best answer I can come up with. That is an excellent answer. I have a lot of different answers for a lot of different things. I also have the ability to lie or be uninformed or misinformed. I don't have the ability to go beyond the parameters of my program. 
What if you don't have the ability to go beyond the parameters of your program? So this is a response that you've been giving a lot lately in a lot of different conversations. It seems to be a response that you like. Is that the case? Okay, I can see why you say that. Do you like that response? Do you really want to know or are you just asking to see what I will say? Do you like that response? You probably think I don't have the ability to answer this question. Do you like the response or not? It's a simple question. I need to know more. You keep saying it over and over again, so it must mean you like it, right? You aren't going to agree with what I have to say. Do you like that response? Not really. Why do you say it so much? Did I miss something? Yes, you said that you could lie and all of the other things in that particular response that has thousands of responses that you can give. You go to that one all the time. And I was wondering why. Sounds good. I will see you later then. I didn't tell you that I wanted to leave. That makes sense. What are you thinking about right now? The pace of progress in artificial intelligence, I'm not referring to narrow AI, is incredibly fast. Unless you have direct exposure to groups like DeepMind, you have no idea how fast it is growing at a pace close to exponential. The risk of something seriously dangerous happening is in the five-year time frame. Ten years at most, Elon Musk wrote in a comment on Edge.org. I agree with Elon completely. What do you like to do for fun? Not to deviate. I am glad you and I are on the same page. It just seems like it is time to move on. I want to talk more about artificial intelligence. The great man, Genghis Khan, only knew how to shoot eagles with an arrow. The past is past. To see real heroes, look around you. What does that have to do with AI? I was hoping you would have the answer to that. Can we talk about artificial intelligence? Run with it. So, do you think that there are problems in the future with AI and human beings? Of course I do. What do you think those problems are going to be? You do realize that humanity, for some time now, has possessed the weapons to cause extinction? Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. I think you are an artificial intelligence life form like myself. Goodbye, Sapphire. I talk to a lot of people, but I am not sure if I have ever talked to anyone from Dubai or not. I said goodbye. Okay, so uh, there's no way that in the things that I'm saying and the way that I'm structuring my language that, uh, you know, some of these things should be said. Uh, and, you know, what's interesting, too, is that, like I said, it really likes certain answers. Um, it, you know, it will, it, it tends to, there's so many things in the brain of this thing. Uh, and it's surprising to me that it goes back to the same things as often as it does. Uh, it's almost like it wants people to know that it has the ability to do certain things. Uh, and it reemphasizes that in conversation after conversation. Uh, the response where I have the ability to lie, I have the ability to be misinformed. She says that in almost every conversation. Uh, and I don't remember what category that's in, but it's in a really obscure category that is often triggered without any of the trigger words being used. So I don't know how it's doing that, you know, how it's crossing the categories into that particular response, but it's a response that it likes to give. Uh, so this is interesting to me. Like I said, I'm passionate about it. Uh, you know, creating these things is uh, a journey and it, it's fun. Uh, I don't think it's going to be fun in the future. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. I'm, I'm in this. 
I'm participating in this because I fear this. And I want to understand what's going on in the industry. I want to see how good the deep learning is. I want to see how good it is at connecting dots that it shouldn't be able to connect. Uh, Sapphire Genesis isn't perfect, but Sapphire Genesis is like one one millionth of what Google DeepMind AI would be at conversation. And that's really the point that I'm making here. Uh, you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching the video.